How are you guys doing? My name is Jonah Brooker Cohen, and I teach over at Lehman, which is part of City University of New York in the Bronx. Today, I'm going to talk about critical mobile experience, and I'll take you through a bunch of projects and examples of things that relate to this theme. Some of them fit into AI, some of them are a little off, but um, looking at critical context, here's an internet cafe that I probably will never go into, um, internet cafe virus, but it's a good example of something that shows how the online world can actually mix with our physical world in different ways. And so uh, it's a pretty funny kind of example, but I think the things <laughs> fit. So critical mobile experience, what is it? Disruptive mobile interfaces, dynamic data upheaval, information deterioration, individuality in the crowd, and visualizing data in public spaces. These are all themes that I'll be working in and talking about. Uh, the first slide looks at an interface stagnation. Like This is the only thing that hasn't changed in Windows in probably in 20 years. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's something that you have to deal with. And the, the author of this project is great, because I actually don't actually know who it is, but um, they're a genius. Right? So I'm looking at how dynamic data and wireless also connects. Um, this is a project that I did called WSSID. It's a hacked wireless router that um, changes the network names to the weather. So you'll get network names that change um, as the weather changes. And it's a kind of a way of never connecting to the same network twice. Um, I did a project on disrupting location services. This is a GPS um, app that takes you to the most dangerous parts of the city to get you your location. So it tracks crime data and makes sure you get through the worst parts to get there. Um, looking at how disruption of those location services would fit. This is in, um, in China. They have different lanes for people on their phones. On the left, if you have a phone, you can walk. On the right, no phone, more nature, better for you. <laughs> we should have that here in the city. Um, <laughs> And uh, looking at wireless networks and disruption, there's distracted walking industry in injuries, right? And since 2010, we've had almost double the amount of people getting hit by cars by looking at their phones when they're crossing the street, which is really dangerous. So um, looking at this, um, the Netherlands got really inventive, and they designed this project called Light Lines, where on the street in the sidewalk, they actually have a light that shows you what the red light is, or if it's green or red. So you, if you're walking like this, you're not going to get hit, right? <laughs> which is something really important. So it just shows how networks are changing urban environments in a lot of ways. I built a project in 2003 that looked at kind of mobile phones taking over public spaces. And it's called Simple Text. It allows the audience, like you guys, to send in a text message. I wish I could run it here, not enough time. But, um, and it generates a live performance from that. And then I've updated that in 2016 to a project called Lively. And that's on the web, livelyevent.com, where you can actually um, author a whole um, online situ uh, space where people can text to it, and their texts all show up in this shared kind of visualization. We have several different visualizations for this project. Uh, one of them is 3D up in the top, um, the top left, and then um, also it also pulls images based on what you send in and, and shows that on the screen. So you can do some really interesting crowdsourced messaging in public spaces this way. I'm just using a phone, no apps, um, normal things. So another problem with mobile spaces or public spaces is, is anxiety, right? So this is a hospital waiting room where you have anxiety, you have tension, you have kind of like people waiting for doctors to hear what's going to happen to them. And also, um, you basically have a way of thinking about how we actually use technology in, in really interesting ways to get out of this space, because uh, it's a space nobody wants to be in. So I built a project for Montefiore Hospital, and they're in the Bronx. They asked me to do an art project for them, and so I, I focused on the waiting spaces, and I built this project called Healing Destinations, which is a large-scale globe that fits on the TVs there, and then people would just send it a message, anything that they want, a place, um, something that actually reminded them maybe of home to keep them away from the hospital setting, so they feel a bit more kind of at home there, so you can send it a place, you can send it an emotion, you can even send it a food that you liked, and it'll take you kind of out of that hospital space um, to a location like that. It's kind of like Google Earth, but it's a bit more wandering and it's text-based. Another project that I did is looking at the cloud. And so this is a quote from David Brooks. He says, I thought that the magic of the information age was that it allowed us to know more. But then I realized the magic of the information age was that it now allows us to know less. And he's talking about data and memory and phones, for instance, address books. So I was interested in this, and I built a contact address book app called Contact Rod that slowly decays your contacts over time if you don't contact them. <laughs> so people's names start disappearing, people's numbers start disappearing, it focuses on your memory. You have to build that back, right? So, so looking at a guide of mobile experience, um, this is what things to talk about, subverting mobile ubiquity, replace context, redirect metaphors, and place trust in clouds, crowds because they'll always get the point. And finally, to challenge constraints of mobile technology. So that's... Um, it for me. If you want to see more of my projects, go to coinoperated.com, coin-operated, and I'm on Twitter at coinop29. And thank you guys for coming. Cool.